The Precision Flow Plus provides small prong, high velocity nasal insufflation for patients in respiratory distress. In this video, we will review high VNI technology and the Precision Flow Plus unit from Vapotherm. We'll go over how to set it up on a patient, alarm function and troubleshooting, and cleaning the unit. Please note that this video is specific to the United States market regarding items that come with the Precision Flow Plus. The contents mentioned in the unit assembly and setup section may differ for countries outside the U.S. Your Precision Flow Plus unit comes with the following components. A fully integrated Precision Flow Plus unit with the flow meter, gas blender, humidifier, and oxygen sensor all in one. A power cord, an O2 sensor cell, two gas inlet filter traps, two hoses for air and oxygen, a nurse call EMR communication cable, the EMR connection is a standard RS-232 output, and the nurse call cable is a stereo audio jack. And finally, it also comes with three nurse call cable adapters. We make these nurse call adapter cables available depending on your hospital's nurse call system. Let's start by getting to know the Precision Flow Plus unit. First off, you will notice a small panel on the back of the machine. Inside this panel is an O2 sensor. This oxygen sensor monitors the gas mixture and signals any discrepancy between what is set and what is being delivered. When connected to a pressurized oxygen source, the sensor will calibrate at startup and every 24 hours while plugged in. In most cases, only your biomed department will be concerned about this, as the O2 cell sensor only requires changing once a year. Also behind the O2 sensor cover is the unit's connectivity port. This is accessed via the hole and associated silicone plug during normal use. This is where you'll connect the Precision Flow Plus into your nurse call or electronic medical record systems using the nurse call EMR communication cable. As with any respiratory device, we require two things to operate, a gas source and power. You will see you have an air hose and an oxygen hose. You will need to connect each to the appropriate gas inlet filter traps. These filters require changing once every six months. Ensure that all the fittings are tight and the traps are oriented downward. Connect your air and oxygen to your gas source before you turn on the device. We like to think of it as gas before go. Once the air and oxygen are connected, plug the power cord into a facility approved outlet. Plug the nurse call and EMR cables into the appropriate hospital systems. Nurse call systems are not required to be able to use the Precision Flow Plus. As we open the door to the unit, you will see where the disposable patient circuit, also referred to as the DPC, will be placed. You will notice the heating plate and other optical sensor ports within this docking area. This is where the Precision Flow unit monitors the patient disposable in regard to temperature, water level, and water circulation. It is here that the Precision Flow Plus also identifies what type of circuit is in the unit and locks the flow meter into that specific flow range. We will now demonstrate how to set up the disposable patient circuit. We have two types of disposable patient circuits, high flow and low flow. Note on this package in large blue lettering, it states high flow. This kit is specific for both pediatric and adult patient populations and is to be used with the adult and pediatric cannulas. The flow range for this kit is five to 40 liters per minute. The other packaging in large red lettering states low flow specific for the NICU and neonatal population. It is to be used with only the premature, neonatal, and infant cannulas. Its flow range is from 1 to 8 liters per minute. Both disposables allow for 30-day, single-patient continuous use before required replacement is needed. In each DPC package, you will find three components. The disposable water path, which houses a water reservoir, pump, connections for the cartridge and delivery tube, and sensor interfaces to the main unit. The vapor transfer cartridge, also known as the VTC, which creates Vapotherm's medical grade vapor. And finally, the patient delivery tube, which maintains the temperature of the breathing gas via a warmed water jacket to minimize rainout. Use the following steps for setting up either of the DPCs. Remove the vapor transfer cartridge from its individual package and remove the four rubber covers from the pegs. While holding the disposable water chamber by the handle, Line up the four pegs of the vapor transfer cartridge to the four holes in the chamber and insert the cartridge by pushing it firmly into place. 
It does not matter which way the cartridge is oriented. Next, remove the patient delivery tube from the packaging and locate the three-pronged attachment at one end. Still holding the disposable water path, flip it over and locate the insertion point with three holes on the side of the chamber. You will note that similar to a puzzle piece, it will only go in one way. Line up the pegs with the corresponding holes in the disposable water path and push into place. Now, still holding the disposable chamber by the handle and using your free hand, open the door to the Precision Flow Plus docking station. Coming down over the top, slide the disposable circuit into place, making sure the heater plates are lined up and push firmly down. Ensure the DPC is fully seated and shut the door. Using aseptic technique, take an alcohol wipe, rub the tip of the water spike, and then spike your sterile water bag. This is very important. Before we turn on the unit, we want to unclamp the water inlet tube and make sure water is flowing into the disposable patient's circuit. Wait approximately 90 seconds before pressing the Run Standby button. If you are using a hard water bottle, wait 180 seconds. When we look at the front of the unit, you will notice that there are three controls. The Run Standby button, which starts the unit and places it in standby, the Setting Control knob, which allows you to adjust the parameters, and the Alarm Mute button, which allows you to intermittently silence alarms and also dims the display panel. Here you will notice that the screen is blank. That is because there are three modes to the unit. Those are Sleep, Standby, and Run. In Sleep mode, the unit will have a blank screen and an amber light showing. The unit cannot be started from sleep. To put the unit in standby, simply rotate the blue control setting knob to illuminate the display. You will see the three parameters of flow, FiO2, and temperature. You will see that the parameters are flashing and are shown with zeros, indicating that no flow is being delivered to the patient while in standby. You will also see the corresponding cartridge indicator on the lower right hand side which will identify what type of disposable patient circuit is in place. A blue icon indicating high, or a red icon indicating low. To enter run mode with the screen illuminated, simply press and release the run standby button. The machine will give a series of 10 beeps and will begin to power up. This is normal and indicates that the unit is going through its self-test. At this point, the small light above the run standby button will change from amber to flashing green. Let's focus on this light indicator above the Run Standby button for a minute. When the light indicator is a constant amber, that means the unit is in standby and there is no flow being delivered. When the light changes to a flashing green, the unit is in run mode and there is flow being delivered, but the unit has not yet reached the set temperature. When the light is a constant green, the unit is in run mode and flow is being delivered with all the parameters met. A flashing amber light indicates that the unit is in battery mode, and although the heater and pump shut down, flow will continue to be delivered to the patient for approximately 15 minutes. We will discuss the battery more in the troubleshooting section. For a complete list of all light indicators, please consult the Precision Flow Plus instructions for use. As we look at the front display, you will see your three parameters. All will be adjusted by the blue control setting knob. The FiO2 is controlled by a built-in electronic blender, which allows for precise FiO2 delivery to your patient. You can set the FiO2 between 21 and 100%. To ensure the set parameters are being delivered to the patient precisely, the unit calibrates at startup and will continue to calibrate every 24 hours while the unit is plugged in. Your flow is controlled by an integrated electronic flow meter, which allows for accurate flow rates between 1 and 40 liters per minute. The temperature can be adjusted between 33 and 43 degrees Celsius and allows the user to set a precise temperature for optimal therapy. Finally, integrated within the unit is a battery backup which will ensure flow delivery continues for at least 15 minutes, even in the case of a power outage. This feature is specifically designed for short-term emergency backup and not for patient transport or transfer. To adjust these parameters, simply do the following. Push the center blue control knob and the FiO2 flashes. Turn the knob to your desired setting. Push the knob until the temperature field flashes. Then turn the knob to your desired setting. Push the knob until the flow field flashes. Then turn the knob to your desired settings. Once the selected parameters have been set, 
simply stop pressing the button and the unit will lock in the settings. Now we are ready to select our cannula. Vapotherm manufactures eight different size cannulas for the various patient populations. Five cannula sizes for the red, neonate infant low flow setup and three cannulas for the blue high flow setup. For the high flow DPC, we have the pediatric small, one to 20 liters per minute, the pediatric adult small, five to 40 liters per minute, and the adult, five to 40 liters per minute. For the low flow DPC, we have the premature, neonatal, solo, infant, and intermediate infant cannulas, which all deliver one to eight liters per minute. We also have a 22 millimeter trach adapter available, which attaches to a trach collar or T-piece. We use small prong cannulas with short supply tubing. The shorter cannula supply tubing is important because we want to maintain the temperature and humidity level all the way to the patient. If you notice on conventional cannulas, the tubing is much longer, which would allow for cooling and condensation collection. Our cannula with the shorter supply tubing reduces that. When choosing a cannula for any patient population, it is important to select the cannula that does not occlude over 50% of the inner diameter of the patient's nares. Once the proper cannula has been selected and the set temperature has been reached, you may place the cannula on the end of the delivery tube. It is also best practice to put the cannula on the patient to warm it to his or her body temperature. This also helps to reduce condensation. Now the setup and patient placement is complete. We will next discuss the alarm and safety features of the Precision Flow Plus. The Precision Flow Plus is designed specifically with patient safety in mind and includes a comprehensive alarm package. These alarms are both audible and visible. There are 11 medium priority alarms, which can be silenced for up to 20 seconds, and two low priority alarms, which can be silenced for two minutes. These alarms can be signaled to your hospital's nurse call system through the nurse call communication cable using an appropriate termination. The first alarm we will demonstrate is the blocked tube alarm. By simply occluding the end of the delivery tube, you can see that it triggers the alarm. Flow will suspend momentarily until the occlusion is relieved. At that point, flow will resume. To resolve the alarm, start at the patient and work your way back to the machine to identify the cause of the occlusion. Another alarm is the gas supply fault alarm. This alarm monitors the gas supply to the unit. When we disconnect any one or both of the gas supplies from the wall or the Q50 compressor, the unit will alarm. Simply reconnecting the hoses will correct the problem and the unit will resume operation. If the unit is started with only one gas source present, the unit will have to be placed in standby before the second source is connected in order for the unit's blender to recognize both sources. That's why it's important to remember gas before go during setup. If we disconnect the power cord from the wall, the unit goes into battery mode. At this point, the heater and pump will shut down. However, you will still be able to control the blender and flow meter as flow will still be delivered to the patient. The unit will remain in battery mode for at least 15 minutes if fully charged. It takes approximately two hours for the battery to fully charge. If the battery icon is illuminated during operation, that means the battery is charging. When it disappears, that means it is fully charged. This mode is not meant for transport, but only for emergency backup, as the Precision Flow Plus is not intended for transferring or transporting patients. To show you the other alarm indicators, we will place the unit in standby mode and remove the DPC. As you can see, three alarm indicators are now illuminated. The two on the right are for the disposable water path and vapor transfer cartridge. If these two alarms are triggered, it means that the unit has not properly detected the patient disposable. If this occurs, simply put the unit in standby, open the door, and reseat the DPC. If this does not correct the issue, simply replace with a new patient disposable after you disinfect the unit in accordance with guidelines we will address shortly. Retain the faulty disposable and contact Vapotherm technical support. The alarm indicator on the left is the water out alarm. If this alarm is triggered, it means the DPC has run completely dry of water. Flow will continue to be delivered to the patient. If this happens, turn off the Precision Flow Plus unit, remove the therapy from the patient's cannula, and replace the water bag. 
You should then allow the DPC to prime in accordance with our setup instructions. After you turn on the unit again and allow it to reach the desired parameters, you may reconnect the delivery tube to the patient's cannula. If you see two dashes in the FiO2 display, this indicates that the oxygen cell needs to be replaced at the back of the unit. This can be done in-house at the hospital. If a new O2 cell does not resolve the problem, call VapoTherm technical support to receive further instructions. If you see two dashes in the flow display, this indicates inadequate gas inputs. Please make sure that the gas hoses are firmly connected and that the unit is receiving adequate gas inputs from either a wall output or a compressor. If you see two dashes in the flow and the FiO2 display, record what was showing on the temperature display at the time of the alarm. Simply take the unit out of service and call VapoTherm technical support to receive further instructions. Once the therapy has been discontinued, we can now remove it from the patient and prepare it for the next patient. To do that, follow these steps. Remove the cannula from the patient. Place the unit in standby mode by pushing and holding the Run Standby button for two seconds. You will notice the light indicator go from green to amber. Clamp the water inlet tube. Open the Precision Flow Plus door and lift out the disposable patient circuit, while at the same time removing the sterile water bag from the top of the IV pole. Discard the entire disposable patient circuit, including from the cannula to the sterile water bag. Yes, this includes the water supply. Throw it away. Using a 70 to 90% isopropyl alcohol wipe only, wipe down the internal docking station and the Precision Flow Plus unit. Only approved cleaning solutions should be used to clean the Precision Flow Plus unit. Please follow your hospital's infection prevention program. For a complete list of approved disinfection procedures, please consult the Precision Flow Plus instructions for use. You have now cleaned the device and are ready for the next patient. For any questions, please visit us at www.vapotherm.com. If you don't find the answer to your question on our website, please reach out to us directly through the website. We look forward to helping you help your patients take the work out of breathing.